Hello everyone and welcome back to the Velocity Channel where we are your bridge to financial freedom. Listen, today we have a very special episode because the interest rates have been rising. Now, the reason why this episode is going to be special is because we're going to show you how to take those 8% interest rates that people, let's just say, want you to pay and we want to reduce that down to 0.94% or less than 1%, okay? We want to reduce that down. We're going to show you how to do that in this video, but before we go further, like, share, and subscribe so that everyone on this planet can know the power of Velocity Banking. Without further ado, we're getting into it right now. First of all, I just want to say, please don't be concerned when they talk about the rise in interest rates. A lot of people have their eyes solely focused on that interest rate. And they get scared when they hear terms like 12%, 13%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 60%. 60%. You get scared. You just got nervous right now, me mentioning that, right? Well, I want you to understand two words, all right? And those two words are time okay, and balance. These are the things you should be concerned about and not necessarily just the interest rate. Why is that? Because the interest rate operates on what? Time and balance. You see, the interest rate would not be as a big a deal to you if the interest rate was on, let's say, $5. 60% interest of $5 or 60% interest of uh, maybe even $100, right? It only gets uh, nerve-wracking, right? You only get nervous when there's a big principle involved. Like to some, some think that $20,000, $25,000, $30,000, well, that's a big principle, CJ. Very true. But you can't just look at the interest rate. Because these are the culprits and these are what's stealing your wealth, time and balance. Now, let's get into why or how we pay off a $200,000 mortgage that is at not 6%. Remember, that was the old one. We're going to go ahead and say this one is at the new term, which is 8%. Do you want to see that monthly payment? Okay, let's change the monthly payment. All right, so we went ahead and we changed our monthly payment. We changed that interest rate to be 8% instead of the 6%, right? And really, that doesn't really matter to us. So the monthly payment is $1,467.53 per month for the mortgage about that, okay? Because each lender is different, all right? They do their calculations different. Those miscellaneous fees, you gotta watch out for that, folks, all right? And so here's where we are. Now, if you have a financial advisor that can't do this, please consider getting either a calculator or uh, teaching them how to do this. And if they don't know how to do this, please let me know, we can help them. All right. So placing these factors in mind, we've got the loan of 200,000 at the new right interest rate, which is 8%. That's the new national average. And we have that monthly payment. Do you see how it jumped a couple hundred dollars each month? Right. $1,467.53. But we do have an account and it doesn't matter, folks. All right. We've graduated now. Remember? Before we used to say, man, you got to have a line of credit. Man, you got to have a credit card. Man, you got to. No, you don't. Okay, remember, right? We upgraded. So let's say the $15,000 is in whatever account, either your line of credit or your checking account or your HELOC or, or whatever you have, right? $15,000 retirement account, right? You're at that age now. Hey, you can take it out with all those penalties and everything, okay? $15,000 in that account that you would like to use. How can we use this $15,000 to make this interest rate go down effectively. Now look, nobody is saying that we have changed the interest rate. Remember the lender told you, no, this is the, this is the interest rate. You can't change anything. But by your method of payment, the way that you pay this 
will determine what you are really paying in interest. Because what we want to do is we want to save you in interest. Now, if you're tired of doing these things on the whiteboard, if you're tired of doing the pen and paper route for calculating this out, we have an automated solution for you. Just let me know. All right. That's going to be in the description below. $15,000, $200,000. Who's going to win? Well, let's do this. Since you have a paycheck coming in, right, each month, income and expenses, what we want to do is we don't want this $15,000 to just sit here. Because as this $15,000 is sitting here, whether it's in your savings account, whether it's in your checking account, whatever account it is, guess what the value is doing as it continues to sit? The value of those dollars are going down by way of inflation. The value of those dollars are going down by way of the opportunity tax. Do you know what an opportunity tax is? The opportunity tax is we could have used those dollars to make more dollars, but we left it there and lost the opportunity to create more wealth. All right. We don't want it just sitting there. We don't want money just sitting there. We want it deployed like good soldiers. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take, now the amount is up to you, but I'm going to go all in because that's just how I am. $15,000, okay? Because I know I'm going to fill this back up. $15,000 is going to go towards where? The principal, the principal amount. Does that make sense? So what is 200,000 minus 15,000? You want to do that right here? Okay, we can do it right here. This is how we calculate this. 200 minus 15. This is how we used to do it back in the day, back when we learned cursive. All right? It's $185,000. Let me go ahead and clean this up for you. Now, did you notice anything different? That's right. Look at this. It's 185,000 at 8% now. However, that payment's not going to change. Remember, you're on the amortization table. So, that payment's not going to change. What is going to change is how much you're paying towards the interest and how much you're paying towards the principal. Now, you're paying more towards the principal, right? More and more towards the principal than you would be the interest, even though you may still be paying more in interest for now. Because when you chunk that amount towards the principal, right? The $15,000 towards that $200,000, do you know what happened within that amortization table? Do you know what happened in the atmosphere? Something broke, okay? And you went through a wormhole in time, many times years into the future, to where your payment is more on the principal side than the interest side. Absolutely. Now, you know, you still may be paying more in interest, okay, than you are in principal, but not as much as before this massive transaction. Okay, and so you're wondering why, man, how is this guy able to take 8% and make it 3% or take 8% and make it 1% or less than 1%? This right here is how by taking advantage of time and balance. Now, I've given you enough of this homework right here to last you for at least a year. So now you can look at your finances and you can say, my goodness, what can I do to jump into the future and pay less in interest and pay an effective rate of less than 1% or less than 3% or less than 5%, way less than 8%? Because you can do it. People are paying off their homes, man. I heard it the other day. Less than what? In as little as five to 10 years, paying off not only the home, but the student loan, or the car loan, all those loans, 10 years. And the bank wants me to be on a 30 year plan. The bank wants me to be on a 50 year plan. Listen, I got a brain and I'm going to use it. Folks, if you need help in this area, 
That's what we're here for. God bless and you take care.